Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another weaponized land vehicle, and this one sitting right behind me is called Murphy's Rover. And as you can see here, we've got a lovely custom gun on top to blast your enemies with, a very sleek, almost Tesla Cybertruck design, and we've got a nice sort of seats all the way around it and on the inside so you can carry a couple of passengers with you. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the Murphy Rover is 599 small blocks using the Wayland DLC packs. We've got a little bit of information about it on the Steam Workshop page, or in capital letters, we've got it's a little bit top heavy when driving, that's due to the turret. So we just give this thing a thumbs up, move all the way around towards the very front, we'll have a very brief look around the outside, quick look at the interior, we'll then drive around for a bit and see what I can blast. So my character can now bugger off just a little bit, there we go. And at the front of Murphy's Rover, this is what we get. So front and centre, what we can see is some very unique use of our magnetic plates. We also got one hell of a lot of concrete steel blocks to make up the main body of the ship, and we can see a few windows to peer outside while driving this thing around. If we were to move up and onto the side with sunlight, this is what we get. So we can see one hell of a lot of our armoured panels with once again that concrete skin. There's our wheels that have been slightly clipped inside. With some great use of our barred window blocks to allow passengers to peer outside. Towards the back, we can see how our rear has been angled via a hinge. It comes all the way down at a slight angle. And then towards the back here, a couple of interior lights and a few seats for some very brave passengers. <laughs> then moving all the way up and above and looking down, this is our lovely cannon. It looks like it should be on a tank. We can see our hinge there to move it up and down. We've got a couple of blaster edge blocks. We can see some armoured panels going all the way around to make sure that hinge is nice and protected from any kind of stray shots. Then moving along the barrel, we see some more great use of our armoured panels. And there is the end of our artillery cannon. At least I think it's the artillery cannon. <laughs> I always get those weapons mixed up. Anyway, dropping down just a little bit, we can see our camera to aim this gun. Then a little bit behind it, we can see a little dip. Goes towards our rotor to spin it all the way around. And we're going to continue along towards the front. There's our windows pit inside. Dropping down and coming underneath it, that is all we can see. And there we go. That's a very brief look around the outside of Murphy's Rover, and does look great with how it's been designed. So now what I can do is just grab hold of my character and come over to one side of the vehicle. So we've got a very fancy door, which is right here. It's almost camouflaged completely. If you couldn't see that hinge, you wouldn't know it's there. But we press this button, and it will simply open up and allow you to get inside. There we go, and that's how thin the door is. So hopefully it will stop a few bullets. Anyway, to get up and inside, we need to use our jetpack. There we go. There is our hinge to angle the back of the vehicle. And then some access to our reactors to power this thing up. Make sure we're not going to run out on our adventure. Turning around and looking around the room. We've got two seats for your passengers to sit on. Turning towards the front, we've got two seats. One for the driver and one for your co-pilot. In the co-pilot seat, we can control the custom turret on top. So we simply blast that. There we go. And just coming out of that and pressing the I menu. Actually, see what the gun is. There we go, it's the assault cannon. I always get those two guns mixed up. I think the artillery can only be on the large block, and the assault is for the small block. Yes, into free camera, I can take control of that once again, and we can just simply spin that all the way around, and fire it whenever. There we go. We get a little bit of a jiggle on the vehicle when we fire it, but we do not move back, so that's very nice if you are going to be firing from a dodgy position. Returning that back to its standby position, hopping out of that, we can come into this seat. It's got a few more controls to go through. If I turn around and look at the door and press number two, we can then close that up. Now we're nice and sealed inside. Pressing number one is going to be for our parking brake to turn it on and off. Four and five is once again going to be our gun on top, where four is going to be to take control of it, and five will be to toggle the AI on and off. But with that all done and out of the way, I can now drive this thing around, and we'll see how much of an effect being top heavy has on this vehicle. So moving forwards, this is what we get. We are a rather slow vehicle, but we are moving uphill. And just turning all the way around. We can see our wheels do want to lift off the ground, so that is going to be the way on the top. Come to a stop and do a 180. There we go, it is wanting to flip over. So if you're going at high speeds, it will just end up on this roof. If you're sensible and driving it properly, it shouldn't be an issue at the end of the day. Moving all the way forwards, we seem to cap out at about 45 meters per second. We do have a gyroscope on here, so we are... I have no idea what just happened then, but it looks like we just pinged between two realities. I'm just going to paste in a brand new one. And here we go once again. So as I was saying before, I got rudely interrupted by Lord Clang, trying to temporarily displace this vehicle. We can cap out at about 60 meters per second, but if we go that high, we do risk damaging this thing, especially if we go over a jump. So running it at about 40 meters per second seems to be perfectly safe and stable for this vehicle. 
But as for that, there's not too much else to talk about. It's a lovely little rover if you are looking for one to assault an enemy base. We should get some nice range out of it, and we should deal a nice lot of damage to whatever we hit. In terms of defense, because we are using armored panels, it is going to be ripped to shreds by a machine gun very, very quickly. So any kind of Gatling drones that fly over could be a problem. But if your turret gets the upper hand on it, then it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But as for that, it's not too much else to talk about with this vehicle. It's a lovely little rover and it's got a nice lot of firepower. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.